Yeah. You yeah. know my you know my you know my dad uh, actually uh, he was in a, a plane crash uh, in his early twenties and it was off San Francisco. And he had to swim like a couple miles in that water really? to survive. Yeah. Holy Whoa. shit. He yeah. crashed into the water? I can't gun down anyone Mr. Favor hires. Like this? Clint Eastwood is now 93 years old, and he has been through thick and thin to reach the heights he has attained. How do you think he looks now? This iconic figure recently opened up about the terrible and tough times he faced in Hollywood that caused him immense psychological pain. Eastwood encountered various staggering hardships throughout his life, especially in his earlier years in Hollywood. Despite his successful career, he battled personal demons and faced unbelievable challenges in his relationships and career. How bad were those demons, and how did he conquer them? Join us as we delve into the life story of Clint Eastwood, revealing the whole truth. Let's dive in. Clint Eastwood, Before Hollywood Clint Eastwood, the legendary actor and filmmaker, was born in 1930 during the Great Depression to Clinton and Ruth Eastwood. Despite the challenging economic times, the Eastwood family managed to maintain financial stability. However, they faced their own set of difficulties. Clint's father, Clinton Sr., had a job that required frequent relocations, leading the family into an unsettled lifestyle during his son's early years. Growing up, Clint had to adapt to the consequences of these moves, attending as many as 10 different schools. This constant change made it really hard for him to establish lasting connections with his peers. Yet, Clint didn't dwell on the frequent relocations. He inherited from his father a strong work ethic and the belief that success doesn't come without effort, principles that guided Clint till this point in his life. As a child, the star was reserved and introverted, struggling a lot to open up to others. This shyness persisted until he was persuaded to take part in a school play. He was initially terrified, but the experience became transformative, marking the beginning of his journey toward becoming the confident and charismatic performer and director we recognize today. However, Clint Eastwood's attitude toward academics mirrored his father's approach. Clinton Sr., known for his football skills, didn't prioritize education, eventually dropping out of college. Similarly, Clint's academic performance was modest, leading to enrollment in summer school to catch up. He even had to repeat a grade due to poor grades. His reputation as a troublemaker persisted through high school, leading to his expulsion for delinquent behavior. Anecdotes from Eastwood's mother, Ruth Eastwood, shed light on his rebellious tendencies. He notably wrote an obscene message on an athletic field scorecard and buried someone in effigy on the school lawn, reflecting his defiance against traditional education. Fortunately, Eastwood's path took an unexpected turn when he was drafted into the U.S. Army at a young age, and he learned some life lessons in the Army. After completing a basic course, he took on the role of a swimming instructor, a job that kept him away from the Korean War in 1950. It was an unexpected twist of fate that altered his path. While instructing at the pool, he formed bonds with a special unit, where he met Hollywood figures like actors David Jansen and Martin Miller. They advised him to move to Los Angeles after his service, and this piece of advice resonated with Eastwood. Among his other acquaintances, Eastwood forged friendships with musician Lenny Niehaus and former American footballer turned Hollywood persona David Jensen. Together, they frequented nightclubs, met local women, and became somewhat legendary for their escapades. In the Army, Eastwood also took on the role of screening movies in the unit's barracks. He mentioned that he kept showing The Battle of San Pietro and must have seen it 50 times over two years. While temporarily serving as a projectionist, he gradually absorbed the nuances of film production, learning about shots, rhythm, and content. During his leaves from duty, he often sought leisure in Carmel. He frequented local bars for music and socializing. However, one of his leave breaks almost turned into a catastrophe. While returning from Seattle, the plane he was on crashed, an incident that nearly cost him his life. This near-death experience left a lasting impact on Eastwood's life. He admitted it was one of the scariest moments in his life. At age 20, he was on a plane heading back to San Francisco with an Air Force pilot friend when the aircraft malfunctioned and crashed. The fear he felt was stark and intense, as he was in a situation beyond his control. Wouldn't you have felt the same? 
Adding to the harrowing ordeal, the crash site happened to be a known habitat for great white sharks. Eastwood only learned this after the ordeal, though. He expressed relief that he hadn't known at the time, realizing the peril he had unknowingly faced. He and others aboard had to swim to safety after the crash. This was an experience Eastwood described as traumatic, but it was just one of many. He faced many more challenges and dangerous situations, and will unravel them all as we proceed. Eastwood's harrowing rise to stardom. Clint Eastwood's journey to fame wasn't a walk in the park. He encountered numerous profound challenges while trying to establish himself in the entertainment industry. When he first stepped into acting, roles were hard to come by. His initial role was in the film Revenge of the Creature, where he played an uncredited part as a lab technician. To support himself financially, Eastwood juggled various odd jobs. He worked at a Texaco station near the General Service Studios on Santa Monica Boulevard and managed an apartment complex, which helped reduce his living expenses. He also did things like digging pool pits and working as a cleaner at a furniture factory. However, his career faced a significant setback when Universal Studios decided to drop his contract merely a year and a half after he started working with them. This abrupt termination was disheartening for Eastwood, who was striving for more substantial roles and recognition. Universal claimed he didn't have the right appearance. They nitpicked at his teeth and Adam's apple, things Eastwood never expected. Aside from career setbacks, the icon battled severe anxiety, particularly in the early days of his acting career. His anxiety peaked during the filming of Revenge of the Creature. The pressure to adapt to dialogue and perform amidst a heated argument between the film's director and producer exacerbated his nerves. He vividly recalled feeling like a nervous wreck, an experience that lingered, intensifying the anxiety he was already grappling with. Even in the 1970s, while working on the film Joe Kidd, Eastwood faced another severe bout of anxiety compounded by a bronchial infection. The distress became so overwhelming that he felt as though he was on the verge of death. His struggles with anxiety persisted throughout his career, reflecting the mental toll that fame and the demanding industry took on him. Despite all the setbacks, Eastwood persisted, going to auditions, hitting the gym, and honing his acting skills. How strong do you think his resolve must have been to keep at it? However, when he finally landed a lead role, it turned out to be in a low-budget Western that was so terrible, Clint considered leaving the industry altogether. But fate stepped in when he crossed paths with a director from the Rawhide series during a visit to CBS television studios. This encounter was a game-changer. The director was on the lookout for a young actor for the role of Rowdy Yates, a supporting cowboy character. Rowdy would define Eastwood's career for the years to come. Despite his feeling that such a character wasn't too thrilling for him, the TV network saw potential and catapulted him into stardom from the very first episodes. Clint's portrayal brought a fresh vibe to the show. Tough, good-looking, and skilled in shooting and fighting, captivating a younger audience instantly. He reminisced fondly about those years, where he starred in the series for a solid seven years, from its inception to the final episode. His starting salary of $600 for the first season eventually doubled by its end. As the series progressed, his paycheck reached an impressive figure. While the series itself didn't become wildly popular, it played a pivotal role in shaping Clint Eastwood's career. How the death of Clint Eastwood's father impacted his life and career. Still in the 1970s, Clint Eastwood faced another deeply personal setback when he lost his father to a sudden heart attack. This heart-wrenching event, recounted in Patrick McGilligan's book, Clint, The Life and Legend, occurred in July 1970. His father, Clint Eastwood Sr., was getting ready for a game of golf, but tragically never made it out of his home. His wife, Ruth, found him in his final moments, but despite her efforts, there was nothing she could do. Clint Sr. was just 64 years old at the time. The sudden loss hit Clint and his family hard, especially considering Eastwood's grandfather had lived well into his 90s. The impact of losing his father prompted Clint Eastwood to reassess his own life. It led him to make significant changes, especially in his approach to health, nutrition, and exercise. He started taking his health more seriously, understanding the importance of maintaining well-being. Film producer Fritz Maines, who was close to Eastwood, noted how the loss had deeply affected the actor. He struggled to cope with the loss, 
finding it challenging to comprehend why this had happened. Maines highlighted the emotional toll the loss took on Eastwood, emphasizing how personal and profound the experience was for him. In addition to personal challenges, Clint Eastwood encountered significant controversy when he directed the film American Sniper. The movie faced criticism for potentially glorifying war. Eastwood defended the film in various interviews, emphasizing that it wasn't aligned with any political agenda, but aimed to portray the experiences of soldiers and Navy personnel who made tough decisions to serve. One major point of contention was the portrayal of sharpshooter Chris Kyle, played by Bradley Cooper. Kyle's extreme views in the film, referring to the enemy as savages and despicably evil, led some to believe the movie endorsed his perspectives. Eastwood vehemently argued against this interpretation, stating his personal opposition to war and violence. He emphasized the need for thoughtful consideration regarding matters of conflict, stressing the importance of self-protection for nations. Despite the debates and differing interpretations of the film's message, Eastwood's intention was to highlight the complexities and sacrifices inherent in military service rather than promote any specific political or ideological stance. His aim was to shed light on the realities faced by those involved in war, emphasizing the human elements behind the conflicts. But he was often misinterpreted and couldn't convince everyone to adopt his views. Clint Eastwood's Approach to Relationships the actor's personal life has attracted significant attention and scrutiny due to his multiple relationships and complex family dynamics. His romantic life has been marked by numerous significant affairs and fathering children with different women. One notable early relationship was with stuntman Roxanne Tunis in the early 1960s, resulting in the birth of their daughter, Kimber. Over the years, Eastwood became a father to eight children from different relationships, contributing to the complexity of his personal life. Eastwood's ability to maintain stable relationships came into question. During his time with actor and director Sandra Locke, he was simultaneously married to Maggie, his long-term partner of two decades. His love story with Maggie Johnson began in the early 50s, a classic case of a chance meeting turned into something more. They crossed paths when Maggie, a student at UC Berkeley, caught Clint's eye soon after he was discharged from the military. On a blind date arranged by his friend, Clint and Maggie met, even though Maggie was dating someone else at the time. Their chemistry was undeniable, and they went on several dates. Yet Clint was also involved with others at that time. Before moving to Los Angeles, he had a child with another woman in Seattle, an aspect Maggie wasn't aware of initially. Despite Clint's hesitation, their relationship bloomed, leading to discussions about marriage. Eventually, Clint proposed and on December 19, 1953, they exchanged vows. However, unknown to Clint, just a few months before their wedding, his daughter Lori Murray was born in Seattle and placed for adoption. This overlap in romantic interests stirred controversy and raised eyebrows about Eastwood's approach to relationships. The pattern continued as he began a relationship with Frances Fisher while still involved with Locke and then dated Dina Ruiz while with Fisher, intensifying public fascination with his personal life. Furthermore, Eastwood's reserved and guarded nature, even with close friends, contributed to the mystery surrounding him. Film producer Lily Zook described him as a blend of his on-screen persona and his true self, with a depth that transcends what meets the eye. In 1975, while filming The Iger Sanction, tragedy struck the set Clint Eastwood was directing. An accident claimed the life of experienced mountain climber David Knowles and severely injured another crew member, Mike Hoover. Clint Eastwood was determined to do all his stunts, even against the advice of Dougal Haston, the director of the International School of Mountaineering. Haston, knowing the perils of scaling the formidable Eiger, expressed concerns about Eastwood's insistence. However, Eastwood adamantly wanted to portray authenticity in climbing sequences and stuck to his decision. The Eiger, rising to 13,015 feet, presents one of the most dangerous climbs, and Eastwood was set to take on this challenge during the initial days of filming. This was when the tragedy struck, during one of the scenes being filmed. The terrible accident occurred when a massive rock came loose, fatally striking British climber David Knowles and causing severe injury to Hoover, who was alongside him. The incident deeply affected Eastwood, and his first inclination was to cancel the entire production. 
He was devastated, but Eastwood eventually pushed through and chose to continue filming, a decision influenced by the dedication of the cast and crew. The aftermath of the accident was described as surreal and nightmarish, leaving a profound impact on Eastwood. The complexity in Eastwood's life didn't stop there. His relationships with his children, like Kimber, presented conflicting opinions. While she felt a strong bond with her father at times, she also expressed difficulties in connecting with him, highlighting the difficulties within their relationship. In the 1990s, one other child, Lori Murray, discovered that she was adopted and, through investigation, found Clint Eastwood was her biological father. Eastwood, after being contacted by Murray, welcomed her and introduced her to the media at the 2004 Oscars. Before she contacted him, Eastwood had suspected the possibility of having another child but wasn't certain. The revelation added another layer of complexity to Eastwood's family life. Clint Eastwood's strange and numerous relationships and the different experiences his children had with him paint a tumultuous picture of his family life. Beyond his family, Eastwood also has people attacking his views on politics and the government at large, Eastwood's controversial political stance. Despite his fame, Eastwood has had his fair share of challenges dealing with public scrutiny, especially when it comes to his political opinions. He's expressed his views on various political figures, facing misunderstandings and even false quotes that stirred public backlash. One incident involved heavy criticism from fans who believed Eastwood had officially endorsed then-U.S. President Donald Trump. Although he made favorable comments about Trump, there was no official endorsement. This led to confusion and debates regarding his political stance. In 2019, a viral meme falsely quoted Eastwood as endorsing Trump with the statement, I am endorsing Mr. Trump for president. However, Eastwood never made such a statement. In 2016, he expressed a preference for Trump over Hillary Clinton, but chose not to officially endorse any candidate. By 2020, he shifted his support to Democratic hopeful Michael Bloomberg, stating that Bloomberg would be the best choice. He also acknowledged supporting some of Trump's actions but disapproved of his behavior, especially online. Eastwood's intriguing relationship with politics showcases a rare sense of balance and pragmatism that's often absent among public figures. While he's always had a knack for politics, he has never fully immersed himself in it, maintaining a powerful presence while steering clear of a full political plunge. Despite being a figure who could easily have climbed the political ladder to higher offices like governor, congressman, or even senator, Eastwood shunned those paths. His sole attempt into political office was as mayor of Carmel, add it was a peaceful term marked by notable changes. During his tenure, he brought more civil liberties to citizens and overturned seemingly illogical bans, such as the one on selling ice cream cones, among other administrative restrictions. What's even more fascinating is Eastwood's political affiliations and ideological leanings. Initially identifying as a Republican in his youth, he's demonstrated flexibility in his support, swinging between parties based on the specific issues at hand. Throughout his life, he maintained a thoughtful and independent political stance, often critiquing politicians on both sides of the aisle. However, these forays into politics have made him a subject of public scrutiny, often leading to misconceptions and misinterpretations of his opinions. In Patrick McGilligan's book, Clint, The Life and Legend, Eastwood was depicted less favorably. McGilligan portrayed him as someone with an insatiable desire for control, willing to take extreme measures to maintain it. One aspect highlighted was Eastwood's reputation for terminating contracts with employees if he felt they undermined his authority. Statements attributed to individuals who worked with him painted a picture of Eastwood as a controlling figure, impacting those around him negatively. However, Eastwood vehemently debunked this portrayal in an interview with CBS News. He denied seeking total control, emphasizing his appreciation for collaboration in his projects. He also pointed to his work as a producer and director on the film Million Dollar Baby and his involvement in the film score as examples of his collaborative approach. This contrast in perspectives showcases the complexity of Eastwood's personality and the differing opinions about his leadership style within the entertainment industry. Clint Eastwood's Recent Investments and Donations Today the life of this iconic actor, director, and producer is quite settled. 
He has his real estate ventures and philanthropic contributions. His interest in real estate sparked during his time in the U.S. Army in the late 1960s at Fort Ord, where he developed a keen interest in properties in California's Carmel area. He made his first significant real estate move on December 24, 1967, purchasing 283 acres of land along Highway 1 near Mal Paso Creek. This marked the beginning of his real estate journey in the region. In May 1968, Eastwood and fellow actor James Garner jointly acquired 3,440 acres of wooded land in Carmel Valley. The purchase amounted to $640,000, positioning the property across Carmel Valley Road from the Rancho Canada Golf Course, making it a prime real estate spot. Notably, the two actors' involvement wasn't just for personal gain. In a philanthropic move in November 1983, they donated a portion of their Carmel Valley property to the Housing Authority, designating it for senior housing and showcasing their commitment to the community. Eastwood's impact on real estate extended beyond personal gains. He founded his production company, Malpaso Productions, and later sold a significant land piece to Monterey County, placing a conservation easement on it to protect the area's natural beauty. Using the proceeds, he invested in the Odello Ranch, protecting his investments from flooding and later generously donating portions of the property and water rights to trusts. His real estate portfolio expanded across California and beyond. He invested in lavish compounds, such as a grand 15,940-square-foot compound in Carmel-by-the-Sea, a Spanish-style mansion in Bel Air, a desert modern home, and various properties in other states, showcasing his diverse real estate endeavors. Eastwood's commitment to preserving the environment was evident through conservation easements, showing his dedication to safeguarding the Carmel area's beauty. Throughout his life, he's lived in various residences, emphasizing his multifaceted real estate investments and his lasting commitment to environmental preservation. How Clint Eastwood is faring now. Now, at age 93, Eastwood is gearing up for what might be his final movie, Juror 2. He is working with Warner Brothers on this project. Despite hitting his 90s, Eastwood's showing that age doesn't dictate the end of creativity. His last film, Cry Macho, in 2021, didn't receive the reception he had hoped for, but he's banking on Juror Hash 2 to leave a lasting impact. The movie revolves around Justin Kemp, a family man serving as a juror in a high-stakes murder trial. He grapples with a moral dilemma after realizing he's the one responsible for a fatal accident. The plot thickens as he tries to navigate saving the defendant without revealing his involvement in the incident. With Nicholas Holt portraying Kemp and Tony Collette as the prosecutor, the cast also includes Leslie Bibb, Kiefer Sutherland, Gabriel Basso, and Zoe Dutch. Eastwood was spotted on set in Savannah, Georgia, where the film's production is underway. While an exact release date remains unconfirmed, the film is anticipated to hit theaters later this year or the next. Warner Brothers has committed to prioritizing releases in theaters before transitioning to streaming platforms, affirming that Juror Two Inches is destined for the big screen. Despite Eastwood's lack of a verified social media presence, glimpses into his life surface occasionally. A recent photo posted by his daughter Francesca Eastwood on November 28, 2022, captures a joyous moment. In the snapshot, Clint is seen engaging with younger family members, his smile suggesting a relaxed and happy time spent together, perhaps a break from his movie-making endeavors. While there might be some concern fueled by reports about Eastwood's potential retirement, these glimpses into his personal life and ongoing film projects show a man still deeply engaged in his craft and enjoying moments with his loved ones. Even without an active social media presence, his actions on set and captured moments reflect a life brimming with passion and dedication to his craft. Thanks for watching. Don't miss out on another of our videos. Click on the video showing on your screen to watch the next one. See you there.